Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time uh, to my channel or to any of my videos, hey, good to meet you. Hope you enjoyed the video. And let's just jump straight into this battle. This is how we ended it last episode. We tried to explore one of the coastal reefs to try to get some treasure. Ended up finding some vampire coast. A vampire coast type army there. And we had the choice to either wait for them to take all the treasure and then plunder what was left. Or fight them and take all of the treasure. And of course we're going to take it all. So let's go ahead and start the battle. We're now playing with the new beta, the 1.7.2. And uh... Guess I could go over some of the stuff. I have it on my phone. Wish I had another monitor, but... C'est la vie. So... What it has affected is... Well, it's, it's fixed a bunch of bugs. Uh, obviously, but... What it affects in our campaign is... The Dread Saurian for the Lizardmen... Has... The an attack animations have been tweaked to help melee targeting, plus 3,000 mass, plus 1,000 hit points on Ultra, which is what we're playing on. So if we fight a Dread Saurian, it's going to have a lot more health. Uh, it's got plus 0 0.5 acceleration, so it's a little bit faster, plus 50 building damage. Uh, minus 100 cost, Shredder of Lustria, I'm guessing, is the Regiment of Renowned Dread Saurian. Or it's a, it's a Regiment of Renowned Unit, it's minus 100 cost, Krokgar on the Grimlock. Minus 0 0.4 second melee attack interval, Razor Dawns. Minus 1 per 10 projectile muzzle velocity, plus 10 projectile range, plus 10 projectile calibration distance, minus 1 second base reload time, and Nakai the Wanderer is minus 100 cost. Let's uh, focus on the damn battle. We'll talk about, we'll talk about that after the battle's over. Alright, let's put Wolfheart up with our Vanguard units, and our Pistol Ears will be up. The only thing we have really have to fear about this this Vampire Coast army is they've got a Carronade, and they've got two- No, they got three Mortars. A lot of fucking firepower. Why can't I deploy- Oh. Uh, why can't I deploy them? Okay, we'll deploy here with the pistol ears and try to rush up as soon as the battle starts. We'll put our two heroes of uh, Van er Ertvig Van Hal and Jorik Grimm. We're going to try to rush them up together with these forces up here. Uh, our infantry will be kind of in the back. Our hand gunners will be in front of them. Three Empire Knights will be over here on the left flank. We're going to try to rush them around so they don't get hit by the carronade that has an anti-large bonus. Put our mortar here. Try to move it up behind these buildings so it can fire and not get hit by the carronade. Our war wagon on this side as well. Or no, let's put the war wagon up here. We'll rush it up to this point. Start the battle, rush the mortars up. Rush our Empire Knights over. Rush the War Wagons over. Move Hertwig von Hal and Jorik Grimm forward. Now we're gonna try to harass with our pistol ears. They got some pole arms here, zombie pirate deckhand mob with pole arms. Not as good as Death Guard with pole arms, obviously, but they got that anti-large bonus, nonetheless. God damn, pistol ears are so badass. Just firing both of their pistols. Gangster like that. I need to pull them back because they do have some hand zombie pirate gunnery mob. 
Also with pistols. So we can stay ahead of their range. Oh uh, shit. Let's focus on that death guard with pole arms. They're actually they're firing mortar their mortars are firing at our mortars and our Empire Knights. Let's move our Empire Knights up. We're gonna try to hit that artillery. Focus on the de those death guard with pole arms as well with our two heroes up there on the front line. And we might as well start moving up our other forces. Alright, we're gonna rush into the zombie pirate gunnery mob. Keep moving while our other Empire Knights. We'll break that one, that Empire Knight off and go back towards that zombie pirate gunnery mob to help finish them off. Hit that mortar. For the Emperor! No Alright, those death guard of pole arms are, are gone. All right, you need to go help Von Hal. Just get into the melee. Oh shit, we need to get these Empire Knights out of there. Some more zombie party. Deck mobs with pole arms. It's hard to remember that fucking name. Such a long ass name for a unit. Move the war wagons up. Their general is going after after Wolfhart, so we're gonna go attack him with our heroes. Our Empire Knights over there routed. But yeah, let's finish off the carronade with our mortars. Need to take out that mortar. Okay, we got that Empire Knight that came back. And luckily they came back right behind the enemy. Let's move this pistol leader up. Move our hand gunners up. I think we killed their general. Let's move Wolfhard back up. Damn it, our other Empire Knights got caught up. We're gonna fire at that mortar. Other Empire Knight is charging in to hit that Death Guard. They're all crumbling, so we've won. Oh, uh, something's still crumbling. There we go. Decisive victory. Amber Alert, Powder Springs, Georgia. 2016 White, Kia Sorento. I'm not driving right now, but hey, if something like that comes in my neighborhood, we'll be on the lookout. Always be vigilant. So that was a pretty good battle. We lost 232 men.
these pistol leaders, man. 141 kills, 96 kills, 51 kills for our mortar. Our Empire Knights didn't do that well. They were getting hit a lot, really hard by the mortars, though. Who actually did well? The Huntsman got a few kills. These uh, Free Company Militia did pretty decent. Von Hal did, got a bunch of kills. Any Camp Follower. Ooh, Master, there's some lovely filth over here. Income from all buildings plus 1% to local region, hidden Pirate Cove. The Pirate's Cove contained great wealth in the form of treasures, treasures and items stolen from across the four corners. But getting to it was no easy feat. When the Vampire Admiral at the helm of the black ship saw you approach, he immediately readied his horde of crewmen and darkling creatures for battle. After defeating the undead freebooters, you re ransacked their ship as well as the hidden cave to make for a plentiful horde. We got double barrel. A rare wep weapon. Twice the firepower comes with a guide on how to load both barrels at the same time, if only more of the crew could read. Missile damage plus 10% and reload time reduction plus 10%. And we got another 20,000 to our treasury. Hostility has increased again, so we'll get reinforcements more quickly. And uh, we're going to equip that on Wolfheart for now. Actually leveled up as well. We can finally get Executioner. Scaled projectile damage against combatants with missing health causes moderate da magical damage. Good against large combatants. Good against armor. Oh yeah, we can talk about more about the update now. For the Empire War Wagon, their, the cost of War Wagons has been reduced by minus 50. War Wagons and Mortars, their cost has been reduced by 100. The Black Lions, which is a regiment of renown, has been the cost has gone up by 100. Wolfheart lost 7 melee defense, minus 18% armor piercing projectile damage, minus 17% base projectile damage, plus 0.5 projectile calibration area, minus 70 marksmanship bonus, and uh, if you guys have noticed that when he fires arrows into the enemy, it like explodes, almost like a ballista shot, well that's because he originally had artillery he had artillery projectiles when he fired. That has been changed to an arrow, which can now be blocked by shields and applies a smaller morale penalty. And that's the same for when he has the amber bow. Or no, I'm sorry. That that's the same for when he when he does his executioner. Instead of it being a, an artillery shot, it has also become an arrow. And uh, kill, sh same thing for kill shot. Kill shot has gone from three uses to two. I thought it was called focused shot, wasn't it? Did they change the name? Number of uses changed. We don't have to worry about kill shot anymore because we have executioner now. But that has gone down by fifty percent armor piercing projectile damage, minus forty five percent base projectile damage, minus thirty three percent bonus versus large. The Amber Bow ability has also lost 24% armor piercing projectile damage, minus 40% base projectile damage, minus 17% bonus versus large. It's gained a plus 0.4 projectile calibration area, which she says is plus 400%, minus 75% explosion detonation radius, and minus 75% explosion detonation speed. Hand of Gods, I don't know what that is because I was looking for it. I don't see it here. Maybe they changed the name of that? Hand of Gods. What is that? Sounds cool. I see Sleight of Hand. Hand of Gods. What the fuck is that? Well, that has gone to minus 25% projectile calibration area. And I'll, uh, if I remember in editing, I'll put up a screenshot of the, or a little recording of me scrolling up and down on the update. So you guys can pause and look at it and read whatever you need to.
And now let's move back to our capital. Got a good amount of income. Only one settlement though, so economy is not doing well. Let's give Roderick. We're going to give him that camp follower. Also give him Hunter. And I think that's it. I want to give Wolfheart. I want to give Wolfheart that Outrider. What does the Emperor bid? And uh, let's recruit some more units because we're going to go attack Chotek. This army is just going to be a small little army that provides reinforcements in our battles. We need more infantry. So I'll go for two, two swordsmen. And uh, let's go for a war another mortar. Have we moved everyone? We have. So we'll go ahead and end the turn. I finally fixed my Rode PSA1 microphone boom arm, or I didn't fix it. I had fucked it up because I mounted my microphone on it, and there's a locking... There's like this little silver disc that you're supposed to put on the mount. It's like, uh, what is that called? It's like riveted on the inside, so you 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 put it where the microphone would go. You know, like like you twist it, it goes down, and and then you're supposed to mount the microphone My deeds are like under or above that, however you're looking at it, and that's supposed to like lock it so that you can easily move your your mic around while, but it'll be locked so it's not loose. And I never put that on there. So there was like a little gap at the top and I was always thinking, man, that looks ugly. Because you can see the riveting. And I thought, or not the rivet. I don't know what, the, like the grooves on the screw. I don't remember how to, what it's called in English. But anyways, I didn't put that on there. So my microphone was always able to move around. I could adjust it, but it was always like loose. And it always annoyed me when I saw that, like those grooves. And it was because I didn't put that fucking thing on there. So that's what is supposed to be there in that gap. And it makes it so that it's all, your microphone is always tight. And you can still adjust it around if you need to. Man, I've had this thing for like two or three months now. To be fair though, that thing was not in the instructions. Like, obviously, it lists it as something that it comes with, but in the instructions to set up the microphone, boom arm, it's not in that. We've unlocked the quest for the Amber Bow. Move any character to the following region, Talangshla. Marcus Wolfhart's chosen path is one of hardship and protection. He fights the difficult battles so that the people of the Empire might know peace, safety and peace. Right now, however... This peace has been disturbed by a series of incursions against a group of new colonies along the coast of the New World. Marcus is used to leading men. His team of scouts is few in number and quick to respond to threats. Whereas leading an army takes a great deal of effort and his time is always lost making the logistical arrangements necessary for moving a large host of men. Regretfully, he knows lives may be lost due to the time it will take to come to the Pioneer's aid. And we'll get 2,000 to our treasury. Hostile hero activity. Damn it, they fucking wounded our warrior priest that I forgot existed. Marcus Van Gorst. Ronnie Wolsey from the fucking Vampire Coast Mutineers. Talax. Talax. Wins a magic change rank gained for Roderick. We're gonna 
upgrade assault units because that's what I want to use them for. That's why I just gave him that camp follower so in case he gets wounded. Ah, uh, he failed. Mon dieu, Roderick. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? Uh, let's see. I want to see who they're at war with. Blood kiss of the Straight Frank 69. Nice. Nice. Who are they at war with? They're at war with us and Clan Scryer. Alright, we need to move Kalara. These are dark times. I'm moving her south. Southwest, I want to discover the lore masters because if I remember right, they start here at these islands on the Mortal Empires campaign. And when you play, oh no, 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 I'm sorry, I got it backwards. When you play on the the um the Vortex campaign, they start here, Mortal Empires campaign, they start on these islands over here, or is it those islands? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is these islands. Because I remember then your closest enemy are some, a Skaven clan that's around here and the Vampire Coast itself. So we moved everyone we can. We're going to recruit some more units. Let's get another mortar. Let's get a war wagon. And... Some more swordsmen. And the turn. We're going to be losing money. Even if we take Chotek, we're going to be losing money because obviously one settlement is not going to give us 2,000 income. Especially not a minor settlement with pastures. That port. We can level up the port to, to the second level. Oh, they're coming at us. Me to slay you where you stand, I struggle to disagree. The Skeggy always wanting something from us. We'll give you nothing but cold steel, my lord. Okay, we can fast forward through these rogue armies. The Empire shall burn your jungle to the ground, despicable monster. Oh, did these guys declare war on us? Yep, they did. Rodakodan. Rodakodan. An elector count has contacted you anonymously to lend his support to the expedition. He has made arrangements for you to receive additional aid from home funded by his state. Electors count. Tax rate plus 12% to local province. Tollkeeper. Oh shit, we need to give that to Wolfhart. Marcus Wolfhart, Huntsman General. Or let's uh, give it to this new Hunter. general. What is his name? Eckhart Mosher. 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 Isn't that a comedian? Oh yeah, that's the guy married to Nick. What's her name? That uh, other comedian. I gotta look this up because I'm not. It's gonna be all in my head all day. Oh, the guy's name is Moshe Kasher. That's right. I forgot it's some weird fucking name. Yeah, he's married to Natasha Legero. That's her name. Actually, a pretty funny comedian. Well, actually, they both are really funny. Uh, tax rate plus 12%. Attrition minus 15%. Casualties suffered from high seas attrition. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll give him the semen. So I can remember your name. We don't have anything to give him, no. We need to find some more items. How the hell do you rename people? Oh, there you go. 
This way I'll fucking remember him better. And I get to put in the title. Playing War Warhammer 2 with Moshe Kasher. That I can fucking clickbait people. No. Moshe Kasher. Well, yeah, let's name every. We'll start naming everybody after comedians. All right, we're in March. We're declared defenders of the Great Plan. Units create recruited. Got our units. Uh, Jodic Grim has leveled up. Fight. A master engineer knows all about firing rates. Fields of fire in the best ratios. His knowledge improving efficiency. Reload time reduction plus eight percent for all missile units in the hero's army. Whether it be training harder, traveling lighter, eating less, or sleeping better, there's always a way to draw more from the day. Movement range is increased by an additional 5%. Uh, let's go for standardized firing drill. We're about to have a battle, so that's going to be more useful. Eventually, we're going to go for cleanse corruption because we're going to be fighting the vampire coast. But for now, let's go for bloody blade. Get him a little bit more weapon strength to 363. Hopefully, we can get some weapons for our heroes especially weapons that are rare or unique they get give us some kind of abilities in combat unflinching chivalrous we're going to try it anyway i failed again rodrick you failed me for the last time Huntsman General! Man, dear, what would the Lady of the Lake say? The uh, Dame de Tulak. On the trail! Qu'est-ce que le Dame du Lac, Titon? Marcus Wolfhart. Yes, I do speak French. Pro yes. It's probably the. Probably not the most English, then it's probably Spanish? And then French, or maybe it's reverse. I probably speak better French than Spanish. Kill to protect. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about their garrison. Luckily. Oh, we're not done replenishing our fucking Empire Knights. Took a took Your much more of a beating than I thought. Let's uh. Fight with let's go ahead and fight the battle. Slanhopic. Hey, we, Rick. Oh man, I just realized. I just remembered about Rick and Morty. Isn't it coming out like in December? I remember I saw the new trailer that they released like last week. Oh, and it sucks. It's only gonna be like. It's only gonna be like six episodes or something. I think it's only supposed to be like half a season. That really sucks. I want more Rick and Morty. But as long as the episodes are really good, then and I can't really complain that much. I'd rather have a few really good episodes than a bunch of shitty ones. Then again. Is there such thing as a shitty Rick and Morty episode? Does it exist? Because I can't think of one. Guys, season 2 and season 3 on Blu ray and DVD. Damn it, now I kind of want to watch them. Okay, so let's deploy our infantry here. Where are reinforcements coming from? They're coming from behind us. Okay, so that's good. We'll have our mortar here. Probably gonna have to move it up to be able to do anything. Put our Empire Knights in the forest, hide them. And gunners up front because we're going to be moving them up. Outriders. Put the war wagon over here. Move it up as soon as the battle starts so they can start harassing. Two heroes will be up here on the front line. Oh. 
And let's go ahead and start the battle. Move these guys up. When the handgunner's up. Yeah, it looks like we do have to move the mortar up. And we'll move our infantry behind them. Let's move the pistoliers back. They're too far up. Let's move the war wagon up so they can start harassing as well. Where are reinforcements again? Oh, perfect. They're all in the fucking woods, so I can barely see them. Just gonna rush them all up. Yeah, we'll just rush them all up, and as soon as the battle, as soon as they get here, we'll, that's when we'll start organizing them. Let's move the pistoliers back. Those uh, skink skirmishers are already starting to hit them. Need to move up. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna move our handgunners up. Start moving our infantry up. Alright, what is our mortar focusing on? Go ahead and focus on that big group that's being. It's being kind of brought, grouped up by Marcus Wolfhart. Damn, our free company militias got caught up. Their skirmish fucking ability completely fucked them because somehow they ended up in the middle of a bunch of enemy units. You think I don't see you, red crested skinks? And these little assholes are shooting into our Empire Knights. How did our fucking pistol ears get caught? I swear to god they need to fix the fucking skirmish in this game. Now let's go ahead and rush these infantry up. These mortars can deploy here. Let's get our infantry in. Let's focus on these enemy units that are grouped up there. I'm gonna rush those swordsmen in. All right, we don't have Roderick in here, do we? Let's use Shem's Burning Gaze. They're grouped up, so it'll hit them, and it can do a lot of damage. Let's get these Empire Knights out of there. Did he fire already? Yeah, he must have. He got 14 kills. Not bad. Move these spearmen up. Ready to serve. To battle. Need to bring back our skirmisher units. Damn it, these Empire Knights got caught up again? Quick march. No shoddy contraptions here. Alright, our handgunners are not lined up properly. This war wagon needs to come around. Let's use these mortars. Focus on. Let's focus on the skink skirmishers, I guess. Actually, this one. This one is almost at full strength. Go! 
These Empire Knights got caught up. Luckily, it's just a skink cohort. So we're gonna charge them from behind with our other Empire Knight. And just crumb crush them. There we go. Let's focus all those units on that general. Focus all of our artillery on these skirmishers. There we go. Not the best fight. Pretty sloppy, but... Fucking won. Let's use the Executioner. I've never actually seen it. Or I've only seen it in Lionheart's campaign. I've been watching his playthrough. Did he even hit? It looks like he hit the ground. Come on, Wolfheart. You're fucking killing me here. How the hell did you miss? We'll use our potion of healing. Just so that his health will be higher up. Or near its max, as near to its maximum as we can get it. Damn, Von Hal, fucking almost got taken out. Shutting through. Is it still healing him? Yeah, it is. All right, there's over now, so we'll end the battle. Oh, I have fucking cavalry. I don't know why I didn't chase them down. Man, I am so fucking dumb. I was so distracted that I let them pretty much escape. Yeah, we're not going to be able to ca catch up to them. Decisive victory. Damn it. I could have chased him down. They only lost 32. We didn't do that badly. I thought we lost more men than that. 182 for these hand gunners. 172 for the other. 113, 94, 69, 385 for our mortar. 44 and 11. Damn, these fucking free company militia. That skirmish ability, I'm sure, got them trapped. Because the skirmish ability is pretty much fucked in this game. It only it only takes effect if if they're targeted by an enemy unit. So if the enemy units just like move past them, even if they're basically about to touch, they they the AI like the skirmish ability will not will not take effect. Like, they won't try to run away from them until that enemy unit has, like, an attack order on them. That's when they'll start to run away. So if you're fighting, like, a lot of skirmishers, you know, just try to order your cavalry, like, to move closer to them without actually giving an attack order on them. And if, like, that skirmish unit is already firing... They usually will not run away. The skirmish ability won't take effect, so they won't run. And then you can just, as soon as you get as close to them as you can, hit that attack order on them, and uh, they won't have time to run away. Any last We're going to execute. Time to move. The White Cloak of Uruk. Made from the pelt of a middenland wolf and blessed by the high priest of Ulrich, a deadly hoarfrost surrounds the cloak freezing the wearer's foes. Passive ability Hex. Constant round self, 40, mi 
40 meters, minus 9 melee attack, minus 6% speed. Tamosha Casher. Is this unique? Or is that just rare? Potion of Toughness. Find their skin hardening as swords and arrows glance off their body, even on parts not covered by armor. Even on parts not covered by armor. I don't know why I'm, I was thinking that was like a dick joke. Maybe it is. Out, outright a campaign line of sight plus 25%. Huntsman of the Empire. What is that? Is that a talisman? Yeah, we're gonna give that to Marcus Wolfhart. Sorry, Moshe Kasher. Marcus Wolfhart. And we'll give Von Hal the potion of toughness. Cause he uh he took a lot of losses. We'll give uh, Moshe Kasher the Outrider. Who leveled up? Just Wolfheart. Marcus Wolfheart. We should start going for something that gives us... That lowers the upkeep, and I think that's Quartermastered, yeah. If you get it up to 15%, this also increases replenishment. I usually play with mods that increase the number of skill points you get so that you can max out pretty much everything. Obviously I'm just playing with the base game right now, no mods. So this makes it harder because I actually had to really think about what abilities I want this general to have. And I want to make him incredibly powerful in combat. But I also need to lower the cost of his army. I need... Four points. Yeah, I need four points in this. Then I have to get repressible. So five. Eight points because I want to max that out. So I need eight levels. For right now, let's go for hard to hit because I want to go for Hunter's Snare and then Hunter's Trap. Mission accomplished. Marcus Wolfhart. Let's go! Then let's pull back here. Uh, we can't go into encamp. They're gonna start replenishing. No greater marksman. Zultma. Marcus Wolfhart. No time to waste. The nation calls. We're gonna pull back so we can replenish more quickly. We couldn't go into encamp, so we need to we needed to rush back to our settlement Lady of the Glade, at your and send Kalara back. Oh, I forgot why I was sending her out here in the first place. <clears throat> I was thinking her to send her here to get the quest. I forgot that I sent her, I was sending her that way to find the lore masters. That was fucking stupid of me. Uh, what else do we recruit? We got two mortars. Let's go for two hand gunners. And that's it for this army. I didn't mean to click that. We need to hit them again before they finish replenishing. Hopefully before they move that army back into the settlement. Oh shit. Clan Scryer. Vampire Coast has declared war on the Southern Sentinels. Ah, damn it, they pulled back into the settlement and they're actually running away with another army. No, I don't call 
I always assumed they were part of the Empire, but they're apparently part of the Southern Realms, like... Like with the... Now, what's inland is an Empire province. What is it called? I don't remember. You have exactly three seconds before I signal for your death. Oh, they want a peace treaty. Okay, so we got peace with them after they declared war on us last turn. Our wizard has leveled up. We're going to upgrade that Shem's Burning Gaze. I thought wizards also cleansed. Oh, I thought that they I thought that they cleansed corruption automatically. Huntsman General. I guess not. I guess then they made it so the vampires special witch hunters specialize that in more. Or specialize more in that, so they're more important. Cause I could have sworn that the warrior priest, the vampire hunt the I mean the witch hunter and the battle wizards could cleanse corruption before. Thug, assassinate action, additional 10% success chance. Alright, we got success. He assaulted the units. So they've suffered more casualties. Uh, Roderick has also leveled up. Oh, we're gonna go with Blade Master. What just happened? Did he level up twice? He did. And we'll go with... Yeah, we'll go with Deadly Blade. Huntsman General. So his melee attack is at what? Melee attack is at 63. It's pretty good. Huntsman General. Marcus Wolfhart. All right. Is Clan Scryer at war with them? Ah, yes. uh, shit, they are. If we don't take that, then they're going to take it. So we're going to have to do this. Marcus Wolfhart. Alright, that's not really that big of a threat. Most of them are really wounded. Sorus Scar Veteran. Sorus Warriors with Shields. Chameleon Skink, Skink Cohort, Cold One Spear Riders. That's a big threat. Fearless. Damn, I really wish we could replenish more, but we're not gonna have the opportunity. Do your worst for the Empire. Huntsman General. And before I forget, let's move Kalara once again. We need to find the lore masters. I want to get trade with them. The Alright, we didn't. Oh, we did discover them. That we would have discovered the dwarves that are around there, but somehow yeah, discovered the lore masters instead. Make this quick. I have important matters to attend to. No. Okay, they don't want a trade agreement. In a non-aggression pact. So the non-aggression pact? Nope. Trade agreement. Consider it done. Okay. So that'll go up while we're trading. And hopefully we can get a non-aggression pact and then an alliance with the lore masters. Chivalrous. And uh, that's what we're going to call it. It's been going on for a while. I don't want to go too long in this episode. We're ready to do two battles. I was hoping we'd take the settlement. We'll have to wait until next time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe. It really does help. Maybe even consider sharing the video with someone you think might enjoy it. It's completely up to you. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. If you disliked it. Let me know in the comments below. What? Give me an advice on the campaign. 
Or if you didn't like the video, tell me why you didn't like it. Maybe that would help me improve. If you did like the video and you and you thought I was doing something wrong, either way, you know, let me get, feel free to give me any advice on recording, audio, my campaign, my army composition. Well, I really can't do too much about that. We're really limited on what we can recruit. We're going to have to de depend more on our Imperial supplies. <clears throat> but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, or you didn't enjoy it, I'd suggest you guys go check out Lionheart's playthrough. I've been watching it. I think I've watched episode 1 through 9. Uh, but yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, we're definitely a lot richer than he is. As far as I know, because uh, like I said, I haven't watched all of it. I've only watched 1 through 9, but from where I saw, he wasn't really making too much money. We're not either, but we've got a lot just from those, just from treasure hunting. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time. So peace out.